everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Big Ideas Live Recap. I'm here with Sloan Frost again, uh, who's from Students for Liberty, and we just finished our Big Ideas Live event on the in role of incentives in healthcare. Uh, so thanks for appearing with me, Sloan. Uh, we're going to oh, go through. Thank yeah, thanks a lot. We're going to go through a couple of the most important things that we talked about. Um, so you guys uh, hopefully will tune into the whole event, which will be posted online later. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about, Sloan, is incentives. Um, they are not just something that we talk about when it comes to economics, although they're important in economics. Uh, they apply in all different areas of life. So did you want to talk just a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So this is one of the things that I find uh, most interesting is that people tend to say that incentives don't matter when it comes to things like health care or education. But the reality is that you still have people, right? I mean, you yeah. still have people who are trying to either make a living um, as doctors or as uh, people who run hospitals, and you still have people who are seeking care, you know, people who are either patients or sick or caregivers, and everyone who's involved in healthcare in some way or another has constraints. So yep. they have limited time that they go, or they have limited budget. So there are incentives that push them to either access care in a certain way, or pay for in a certain way, or trade with each other in a certain way for healthcare. So all of these interactions that people have with each other and all of the decisions that they have to make on a daily basis are all influenced by this crazy web of incentives. And then you throw into that pot government intervention and government yep. regulation, and you get even more crazy incentives that push people to act in a certain way. So no matter what you're talking about, you always are going to have incentives that may change the way that you make decisions. And if you think a little bit about why they're there and what they were designed to do, uh, it becomes a really interesting conversation. Yeah, for sure. And uh, regardless of what you think about the government being involved in healthcare, there's no uh, arguing with the fact that it creates a whole new set of incentives. Absolutely. Um, and we, we talked a little bit about all of the different incentives uh, that come into play. Uh, and there were three that you said are the most important to me uh, after the event, and they were cost, access, and quality. So how did those yeah. uh, play into the incentives in the healthcare system and how it how it affects us? Yeah, you can think about healthcare in an interesting mix of cost, access, and quality. Mm -hmm. So lots of times, and especially in our conversation today, we talked about how People who want to create a better healthcare system are worried about things like how much is it going to cost? Yeah. They're worried about is it going to be good medical care? And they're worried about how am I going to get to that medical care? So you mm -hmm. talked a little bit about waiting lines, which are you know famous things, examples in single-payer single healthcare systems. Yeah. And we also have this issue where, especially in the States, you can slap a label of insured on someone and give them an insurance card, but it doesn't mean they're going to get access to care. It doesn't mean that they're going to actually get to see a doctor. So you have these competing incentives for cost, access, and quality. So cost, that's obviously, I don't want to pay $3,000 every time I go see a doctor, right? So as a patient, I have insurance, and then I only have to pay for a certain portion of my costs. And that can be a problem when I don't have to pay my full bill. If I only see a bill for $20 instead of $300, I may access that service differently because I've been incentivized to go more frequently because I've been paid less. So that's one that's one right. set of have some cost. Um, with access, you can talk about how uh, doctors are incentivized to provide more or pricing mechanisms in healthcare. So we don't have a menu for healthcare services like it costs a hundred dollars to go see a doctor or costs three dollars for this band aid when you go to a hospital, things like that. So without those prices that are public, we have an incentive to spend more money and not really worry about who's fitting the bill. Right. And then you have incentives for quality. So that's things like, am I providing good care? Am I being uh, a good consumer of care? And now we have some really cool technological opportunities to advance that um, and to get measures out there and, and publish them. But you know, if you want to provide good quality, it means it's probably going to come at a higher cost. And it also means that fewer people are going to be able to access it. If you want to get more access, it means you're going to have to pay more money for people to see a doctor, and it means you may not be able to see the highest quality doctor anymore. So right. balancing those three components is really important to incentivizing better health care for everyone in the population.
Yeah, and we talked a lot tonight about the different ways that this affects at least the United States and Canadian healthcare systems. Uh, but as we learned, we can easily talk about that for an hour. So uh, anybody who's interested will have to tune into the full conversation. <laughs> um, so one of the things, uh, the reason that I wanted to ask, it was, yeah. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have Sloan on Big Ideas Live is because of her piece uh, in a Students for Liberty book called Why Liberty, which I have here, and is available online for free. And she talks about um, the way that when you are using a healthcare system, it can seem as though it wasn't designed by people who really care. It seems as though it's too complicated. It seems as though it doesn't really care about people who are really desperate. Um, and yet the people who designed any system are, are just people, right? Um, they're not evil. They're not uh, uncaring. Policymakers are no more evil than um, business people are sometimes made out to be. Everybody has a basic human caring for each other. Uh, and one of the ways that Sloan explains that this happens is that incentives are different for everybody in the healthcare system. Uh, so Sloan, tell us a little bit about how the different people in, working in a healthcare system are affected by incentives and how that affects the system generally. Sure, so there's a giant uh, system that's at play whenever you talk about a population level healthcare system. So it helps to kind of drill it down a bit to a single interaction. So let's pretend that um, I'm an insurance company, uh, like we did tonight, and I need to figure out who I'm going to tell the people that I'm insuring they should go see when they need uh, medical attention. So, for example, I have a choice of two doctors. I've got Dr. Orange and Dr. Blue, mm -hmm. and I have to say to my beneficiaries, do you want to see Dr. Orange, who is a better doctor, or Dr. Blue? Well, what I can do is I can charge my beneficiaries less or have them pay a lower copay for seeing Dr. Orange. So that pushes the patients to go see one doctor versus another. Um, doctors have that too because they want to enter into a contract with the insurance company right. to get patients to come see them. So doctors may say to an insurance company, hey, I'll only bill you X dollars instead of X plus 10 because I want you to tell your patients. So, People are negotiating with each other for more business within healthcare, but it also incentivizes them to behave differently so they can they can get that attention. And then if you're a patient, of course, you don't want to spend a lot of money. You want to quickly be able to see a doctor, and of course, you want the best doctor. So um, that means sometimes you're willing to spend a little bit more money because you think that incentivizes the doctor to be better because you're bringing them more money. Um, but it also means that uh, you may have to go to an insurance company who's got a doctor that's able to see you um, for less money if you're not able to afford it. So right. there's lots of different incentives at play for everyone in the system. And then you've got, above all this, the policymakers yes. who are designing the system. And like we said, they're not evil. It's just the fatal conceit of a person who's a central planner trying to figure out how they can design a system that helps millions of people, and that's just impossible. Um, you can, no matter how smart you are, or how well-intentioned you are, so that's going to be the best. That's why it's always better for society, for the individual, to be able to have a market-driven system. Yeah, uh, as we as we talked about tonight, and as I've talked about in previous episodes of Big Ideas Live, um, sometimes you don't even know yourself what you're going to want until you actually get into a situation. So it's just impossible yeah. for anybody, no matter yeah, how well informed they are, to uh, to really plan for everything. Uh, so that that kind of gives us an idea of the different incentives and the different people at play. Um, how does this affect the system? How does this uh, result in the kind of mess? That we that we see sure. all over the world, actually. Yeah, this it's terrifying. There isn't really one system that's got it figured out yet. Um, all the systems that you think are really great, if you actually examine them, they have a lot of flaws. So, yeah. one of the problems that happens is that people think if they inject one item of policy or, or they try to tweak one part of a little bit, it's going to help. But what that often does is it creates incentives for people to behave differently. So, for example, in the States, we had the Affordable Care Act, uh, which is also known as Obamacare, uh, which completely tried to overhaul the health insurance system here in the States, but it has a lot of consequences or 
things that people didn't foresee happening. So once you try to put all these incentives in play, you get people operating in different ways than you thought. So for example, um, under the ACA, businesses will get fined if they don't offer insurance to their employees. But some businesses are finding that they can't afford to subsidize the plans anymore for their employees because prices have gone up. Right. So instead, they're dumping the insurance and taking the fine so that um, they still are paying less money than they would have if they provided insurance. So people are responding to incentives. They're responding to the rules and regulations. And sometimes, unfortunately, that leads to some less than optimal outcomes. Yeah, and another thing we talked about a little bit uh, in the event tonight was the fact that people are afraid of change. Um, yeah. Uh, sure. Status quo bias, I think, uh, is the name. Yes. Uh, and yeah, you definitely. Once you're, once you're in a spot, it's really tough to get out of it. Yeah, and I mean, the U.S. just had a big overhaul, but in Canada, there's always the argument about whether if you allow um, the the boogeyman is two tier health care or private health care that would allow poor people to die in the streets without care. Um, and even though that's not what happens in the rest of the world, um, there's. There's a, re I mean, there's fear, and it's reasonable because it, it's healthcare. It's a very important uh, policy topic. Sure, sure. So that's yeah, just. It's, oh, it's go ahead. I was just gonna say it's interesting what you hear from other countries that are told about other country systems, right? Because yeah. in the U.S., they'll talk often about Canadian healthcare and people mm -hmm. have access, and the data tend to show us that waiting lines are far. You have to wait a far longer time uh, to see a specialist. If you just have a primary care need, it's of course cheaper uh, yeah. to you when you go to the doctor in Canada versus when you go to the doctor in the States. So um, there are different uh, different you know things that happen as a result of the of the programs, but it depends on your perspective at any given time, you know. <laughs> For sure. So that's just kind of a sampling of what we talked about tonight on Big Ideas Live. I hope that you'll be able to check out the full event when it's posted. And also like us on Facebook, uh, just search for Big Ideas Live, or check us out on the web at fee.org slash big ideas. Thanks very much again, Sloan, for appearing tonight. Thanks for having me.